Thank you. And uh, welcome all and thank you for your attendance today at the Planning Committee. Um, before we do start the meeting proper, as Gareth said, we will hold a, a moment's silence in memory of uh, and respect of the late Prince Philip. So if you would just please mute yourselves and we'll uh, hold a minute's silence. Thank you. OK, thank you. So the first item on our agenda, are there uh, any apologies for absence? I have none, Jenna. No? OK, thank you. Second item, any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests? Are there any members? No, thank you. The third item is uh, to approve and sign the minutes of the previous meeting as a correct record, and you'll find them on the uh, to mention. Start on page one and two. That's the meeting on the 9th of February. Then the next one is uh, page three and page four. Then page five, page six, page seven and eight. Page nine. Okay. True record, please. Yeah, I move that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item four. And are there any items for deferral or withdrawal? No, Chair. None. Thank you. None then. Item five then is uh, the form of Kevin Gore with Colliery at Gowerton. Um, you find that at um, the start of page 11 in, in your reports. Um, it's Chris. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair. Before we briefly um, application, if I could draw your attention to the sheet, it would be that we have, um, since since the report was written, we have had a, now had a total of, um, well, the sheet refers to 147 letters of objection. That that figure has actually increased by another four. We've had another four uh, objections since the update sheet was uh, compiled yesterday. So there are a total of 151 objections to the application. So uh, the application itself seeks permission to modify the section sex agreement. Sorry, Chair, I can't hear Chris. Yeah, we can't hear. Somebody's got their microphone on. Yeah, you could switch your mics off, please. Yeah. Uh, well, put your mic on. There you are, thanks. Sorry, Chris. Okay. Hi, Joanne, I can't see you, but you've got to keep your mic off, please, when other people are speaking, because we get terrible feedback. And we, we okay, can call sorry. you in on your application. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sorry, yeah, so the, the the application seeks to modify the Section 106 agreement that was um, approved as part of the the planning permission for the, the development of the site at Goward Colliery um, for residential development. Um, the the provisions of the original 106 agreement are set out on page 19, starting at 4.3. So. Um, I'll run through them briefly. Um, so the, the original 106 agreement uh, secured 30% affordable housing, um, a highway contribution of 36,000, 
um, an education contribution of £369,076, um, a management plan for uh, some of the land at the site, an ecology contribution, a monitoring fee and the council's legal fees. So the proposed changes to the 106 agreement are set out in section 4.4 of your report um, and they are threefold. They are to remove the education contribution for the English medium school in the area, which is Gowerton, and to change the trigger point for the payment of the education contribution, to reduce the highway contribution from 35,000 to 20,000, and to introduce a mortgage in possession clause for the social rented houses. Now, members, I'm sure, will recall that we had a very similar application at the last planning committee. Um, to vary the 106 re relating to the, um, the Go With Road permission. And that application, I'm sure you will recall, was refused. Um, and the reasons for refusal for that application is set out in section 2.3 of the report. So the, the previous application was refused as committee members were not satisfied with the proposed change to the affordable housing provision. The developer wanted to provide um, all of the affordable housing as intermediate housing um, and this latest application does not propose that change anymore. So in terms of the affordable housing, they have reverted back to what we originally approved back in 2018 in an attempt to um, satisfy the requests of the planning committee. Um, so. I've not got an awful lot more to say, Chairman, other than to, to reiterate what I said last time, in that we are not here to reconsider the merits of the original planning application. We have already considered that back in 2018. So the only issues for discussion today are, are the proposed changes to the 106 agreement, which, as I say, are set out in paragraph 4.4. Thank you. Chair, could, you, could I ask the officer to give me the page, please, and look at how my phone is a bit, I'm going to hard copy. What page is that on? So, the 20. Four, four, section 4.4, Councillor. Yeah. yeah, which page is? Um, well, I've got it on page 20. 20. Okay, thank you. Fine. I'm not sure if the chairman's there. I, chairman, I've, uh, I've I've got no more to add on the report. I mean, I'll take questions later, but um, I think in terms of my explanation, I'm I'm finished. Thank you. You're on mute, uh, chair. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Chris. I've got a speaker down who hasn't. I can't see that name up on the list. Alex Williams. No, I haven't joined. I'm joined. Okay. All right then. So members, anyone want to make a contribution? No? Sure. Sorry, members, the, the objectors are having trouble joining, so if we can just give it a minute or so to see if they can join the meeting.
Councillor Lewis, you wanted to. I can't hear anything at the moment. No, sorry, are we waiting? We're trying to contact the um, objector. Well, I, I think it is important we do contact them, Chairman. Chair, can I have some advice? Uh, seeing that we're only looking again at the housing part of this, uh, are we seeking objections to the whole application? Sorry, sorry, sorry. It, it, it can only be anything to do with section 106. Yeah, thanks. Okay, members, well, we can't contact the uh, objector. Do we want to proceed or do you want to give it five minutes? No, I think it's important we give them the time, Chairman, because at the end of the day, yes. this is a system that we brought in. Uh, and if they, we can't hear them, then I think we should defer for another day when we can hear them. Can I propose, Chair, we, we defer this item to the end of the meeting, see if the objection can come in by then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I second that. Everyone in favour of that? Yeah. 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 All right then. Yeah, it's, it's only right. It's, okay. It's all right then. If that's all right with, with yourselves. We'll move on to the next item, which is on, uh, we begin on item six. The first item there is. Um, can, I just say, Chair, can I just say that I have difficulty, but I'm here now. Linda. Yeah, okay. 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 Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll present this one. OK, um, full planning permission is sought uh, for the change of use of this property, number 260 Oystermouth Road, from a residential dwelling to a children's home, uh, use class C2. Uh, it includes an increase in the ridge height of the existing rear uh, extension, fenestration alterations, and addition of glass balustrades to the front and second floor um, elevation. In terms of a breakdown of the planning history, uh, members will note in the report that the site has been subject to two uh, recent planning permissions, namely in March uh, 2020 for a change of use to an eight bedroom HMO, um, along with ridge height increase of the rear extension, fenestration alterations and increasing uh, sorry, addition of glass balustrades. Uh, at the same time, permission was also sought for a change of use from C3 to serviced accommodation use class C1, along with other um, the other same changes uh, in part of the other application. So the property itself is along Oystermouth Road. It's in a mixed area uh, characterised by substantial uh, terrace properties. Uh, they've traditionally been used as commercial and holiday, uh, sorry, hotel accommodations. You'll see the, the, the outline in red there, that's the application property. Uh, as mentioned, really, I mean, the, the stretch of road, it includes residential, HMOs, flats, hotels, guest houses, as well as public houses, restaurants, cafes, etc. So, so it's very much um, there's residential in nature in terms of the surrounding streets there. Um, there's high density terrace housing and the principle of a form of residential use in the area supported. The application building itself, it's a large uh, residential property set over three floors. It has um, at least seven bedrooms. The rear of the properties on uh, this section of Oystermouth Road predominantly uh, have car parking areas. The, the application property 
um, can provide access from the lane. Uh, there's no current off street parking uh, or pre existing off street parking, but they, they have, um, as part of this application, proposed two parking bays which have actually been carried out there uh, on site. In terms of procedural matters, um, the application is before you today because it's been called in um, and has been subject to the objection threshold having been met. Uh, there's been both letters of objection and support. Uh, recorded uh, 72 letters of objection, a petition with 48 signatures, as well as uh, support letters from 16 in total. So the full extent of comments, they're on the, the application report and held in the file. And the synopsis there really in the report showing the key issues that have been raised. So if we um, scroll through the, the slides, you can just get, get a feel for um, the proposal. So you've got on the left hand side the existing uh, layout of the property, the various bedrooms and the you know, large lounge area on the ground floor. And then the proposed plans then on the right hand side indicating the different rooms. So predominantly you've got your bedrooms, you've got a, a games room there on the first floor staff bedroom on the second floor so it remains uh, you know primarily in, in a residential form of use albeit um, as, as a care home essentially so if we go to the next item uh, this this is just the existing and proposed plans really um, they were very much the same as the two previous applications in terms of uh, you'll note the rear extension actually being increased in height uh, so it's it, really this application is described as retention of, but essentially it's it's retention of the items that have already been approved. So uh, that includes the physical works. Um, there's no actual retention of it, of the use as such because the use hasn't been undertaken. So so those those um, uh, those that development essentially has been carried out, and I'll show you some photos as well if you scroll through. Um, so the host property is. Um, the one to the right hand side there of the oyster, uh, so it's right in the middle, as you can see, it's it's had um, you know, an improved appearance. They you know, have done some work to the property um, in line with the previous consents. Uh, if we scroll through the next next few slides, there's a few photos the case officer took um, took on site actually yesterday. So we've got a existing um, photos there. You can see, see the front, um, the glass balustrades there on the over the windows, <clears throat> and there's some um, photographs then of the rear. So you'll note the the, pro the property is the one um, with the pitched roof, and then the flat roof coming off it. So the the works are essentially already been done. So you can just see the differentiation in uh, the white render to the the render below. I mean. If, it, if that's all painted, you, you probably wouldn't notice that that change has been uh, has been undertaken already. Parking area then, uh, if you go on to the next slide, there, I mean, it's locked at the moment, but there's provision there for two parking spaces. <clears throat> I think there's another slide then just showing the, the parking restrictions there on the back. Uh, so you've got your double yellow lines and um, a few other developments in the area there. Um, OK, so in terms of assessment, there are the items are set out in your report, really. Um, it's an uh, existing seven bed residential property in an urban area. As a starting point, um, as I mentioned, there's planning permissions in place to use the, the, the dwellings, either HMO or commercial service to accommodation use. Both the schemes included those physical works um, involved in marginally raising the rear ridge height of the rear wing, um, new replacement windows and balustrades to the front. So the scheme is described, as I said, retention of works, but essentially it's it's only the works that um, have been carried out that have been retained and they, they've already been approved on the previous applications. In terms of principle of use, um, as mentioned, really, there's a, there's a mixed uh, character in the area. The proposed use is that of C2, so that retains a residential use, but with an element of care on the face of the fact that the, the property is in a mixed commercial and residential area. It can be regarded the use um, in land use planning terms complements the existing range of uses. So it's noted there's a number of objections to the application. These are fully set up in the report many of which refer to existing antisocial uh, issues and behaviour currently being experienced in the area. 
uh, and believing that a place in a children's home is not an appropriate location, which could give rise to uh, further antisocial behaviour um, and issues there um, or place children at risk. So, so the applicants provided a statement as part of the application. Uh, it sets up the nature of their use and um, the key points there are copied into your report on pages 79 to 81. Uh, so essentially it's, it sets out um, that the home, they, they provide support and accommodation for up to five children between ages 8 and 14, which may be reduced in accordance with care inspectorate regulation and advice. They, um, they set out their statement that they want to fulfil the aim of making sure all young uh, people can live life to the fullest, reach potential and there will be one-to-one -one support. Approximately 25 internal and external jobs will be supported. They comment that the comment there's been some speculation and they've um, put in some key bullet points about um, uh, people who won't be um, occupying the property. Uh, so they're not they're saying they're not a house, not housing young offenders or individuals in the justice system, not rehabilitation centre for young people in uh, drug use. They're not a hostel or halfway house, not supporting lodgings with 16 to 18 year olds. And they're not housing high risk individuals that could impact the community. So in terms of the objections we've received, the majority of the issues raised um, in relation to crime, antisocial behaviour, civil matters, there's comments about blocking of access, um, perceived issues of uh, further antisocial behaviour as a result of the use, the increase in crime, the appropriateness of a children's home at the location, these are, these are not matters that are, we are able to control um, under planning legislation. They are um, dealt with separately really by legislation covered by social services, care inspectorate wheels and by the police. So in land use planning terms, the use as a C2 care home as a principle is acceptable here. Um, whether it's an acceptable venture as a care home from this property would be subject to approval by the care inspectorate wheels. They're responsible for registering, inspecting and taking action to improve the quality and safety of services relating to social and childcare and wheels. So effectively they decide who can provide the services, inspect them and drive forward improvements, review and take action when necessary. Um, they regulate the, all forms of children's services, including care homes, fostering, uh, childcare, etc. So, so it's really for, it's not for the planning application process to, to decide that issue. Um, we have to uh, be concerned with land use planning matters and not discriminate against end user. Uh, there's been some objections about highway matters. Well, these are set out in your report. Um, there's existing traffic restrictions all along Oystermouth Road. Um, and actually you can see on the photo there, the, there's restrictions behind as well. The applicants provided dedicated parking area to the rear for two, two cars and cycle parking, um, where previously there wouldn't have been any and um, visitor parking would need to take place on the street. The site sits in a sustainable location and there's no highway objection from the highway authority or reasons in that respect to withhold planning permission in this instance. So to summarise really, the off officers are of the view um, that the principle of development is acceptable. Um, we don't feel they're reasonable planning grounds to um, withhold planning permission in this instance and our recommendation is one of approval as set out in your report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. Anyway, first off, we would hear from the uh, objector. Joanne, Joanne, John, do you have five minutes to address the committee? You need to unmute Joanne. Hi Joanne, can you hear us? You need to unmute. Hello Joanne, can you hear us? You need to unmute I your can... mic. Can't do it for you. Hello, can, hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Do you want to 
Uh, there's some noise in the background. I don't know if you're going to read it or tell me. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Bear with me. Say, you've got five minutes. All right. No. Okay. Um, I'm here on, on behalf of the Sampi's residents, um, and that would be housed here. Um, we're in total agreement with the social services, as you're aware, they are not happy with putting the care home there on Oystermouth Road. Um, it's right next door to the uh, hotels that are obviously um, housing the vulnerable adults at the moment, which um, we are having a lot, a lot of drug taking, drug and a lot of antisocial behaviour uh, on Oystermouth Road, which we have been having, obviously, through all the pandemic. And um, we feel that this is totally... We are worried about the children. We're safeguarding the children um, as they are going to be vulnerable themselves to be put in this position, to be next door to everything that's going on on a daily basis around you. We feel like that um, we would be putting the children at a high risk as we live see what goes on daily. And uh, even though that they say um, there'll be like staff there or three staff, um, those children still have to go out onto that street and see what's going on on a daily basis. Um, we just wanted to safeguard. Uh, we know the risk uh, that this will bring on to the children because the social services are, are in agreement with us. Um, so we obviously want to object this, obviously to protect the children that would be housed there. Um, as you can see, yes, we've done a petition and most of those 48 were from residents that live in Oystermouth Road, uh, a lot quite near uh, in Pearl Court that have to deal with, you know, one lady scared to even go outside her door and to put a children's home next door would, I think, be putting those children at such a risk and to see what they could see daily. Um, I just, we as a community don't think this is uh, the right location at all for them. Um, um, we are not, uh, uh, the way Mr Lynch has done the property is great and that's the way we would want all the seafront to be, like eventually. Um, it's just the uh, the sort of part in children there where the high risk of drugs for them seeing it every day is, is to us, we want to safeguard those children as a community. We just really don't feel it's the right place. Um, that's all I got to say, really, is that we just our main priority is the protection of those children. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, you hear now from the agent, who's uh, Mr. Joseph Pasha. Mr. Pasha, are you with us? Hi. Are you? Hi. All right. Just a, and you've got five minutes. Of address five minutes. Right. Right. I, I would just like to state a request, really, to contact social services in relation to the points that they've addressed and they've made no effort to contact us back in relation to this so we, what we would basically we, we've struggled to in communication with them um some of the points that they made out uh, one of them was beds available in swansea at the moment they said the 57 beds are available or basically unoccupied in swansea so why the need for a residential children's home by the end of this year, four, uh, 54 beds are going to be changed over to adult services. So there will there will be an additional need. Um, they stated that they're going to reduce the number of children in care. However, across Wales, over the last two years, the 7% increase, meaning 852 children across Wales additionally need another placement. The other, the other issue that they raised was the suitability of the area. Um, it being suggested that it's not a safe place. However, they've commissioned and they placements of Swansea children in there's two pilot schemes in area of blind and mice um, come to Cairo. And there's another one which is I would raise concerns that would be in Mount Pleasant. They, they put a uh, Seraph house and commissioned it there uh, with the risks around that Mount Pleasant area. However, they feel that Oystermouth Road, uh, crossroads in the seafront, is worse than what they've already commissioned. So I wanted to challenge us with them and, and basically find out the full severity of it, but no communication has managed to get back to us in time for this meeting. 
Um, what, what we are looking to have is a, a bespoke service that provides care on a one-to-one basis for children that may be complex needs, um, the socially unable to live with their, their parents, etc. And we're looking to provide that one-to-one service, um, a bespoke package that are able to go out onto the seafront and, and able to utilise the the area around you and all on the activities that are on the seafront and things like that. So um, that being said, that's that's all we have for a minute. Apart from we obviously look into employ um, and external jobs over 25 individuals, provide support through education and training as well. Um, we think it's a good opportunity for the people of Sanfield to get behind it as well and, and, and change the community around them and, and promote and promote more businesses like this in the area. Okay. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Um, we got one of the uh, ward members is down to speak. It was Councillor David Phillips. Councillor, unmute yourself, please. Right. Address. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I call the application to committees so that affected members of the public could put their point of view to the committee directly, and you, you've heard from Joanne. However, I would like to make some points of my own, and they're about the use. The application is before the committee because it requires change of use from Class 3, as the officer said, to residential uh, dwelling houses to Class 2 residential institution. This being a requirement for the business's future registration as a children's home. It seems to me to be a rather back to front order of business. That may seem a small difference, but in this instance, I don't believe it is. I've no objection to the principle of a children's home being created in the Sandfields area. Many children live there already, and it's a good place to do so. My concern about the application before you arises from the comments of our own central services department, which is summarised on page 79. And I'm a bit surprised by Mr. Pasha's remarks that those, those, that report, that advice to committee from our own offices is so wide of the mark. We're told by social services that Swansea is already 90% overprovided with this type of facility, and that overprovision will increase to 185% in the coming years. 185% more places than is needed. We are told that because of overprovision, current providers are accepting children and young people from out of county and especially from other parts of the United Kingdom. And we are told that Swansea Social Services wouldn't use this facility. But why is there this over-provision? The reason, Chairman, is money. There is suitable profit to be made from the care of children, and suitable property here in Swansea is very cheap, relatively. So profit can be easily generated. I don't deny that there are children who regrettably can no longer stay with or within their own family home, and that secondary care is necessary. But if there is under provision elsewhere where these children come from, then is it not there that such facilities should be developed? Surely it's generally better for children and young people to be cared for near to their own families and social structure, where contact and relationships can be easily maintained, rather than as now, where some children are moved considerable distances across the UK. But more importantly, I think, social services go on to say in point four that Swansea cannot support the complex needs of the ever-increasing number of children coming to the city from other parts of the United Kingdom. I think this is a really important point, that our services are already at capacity and creating further demand for these services, education generally, special school placements, mental health facilities, can only, well, they say exasperate, but I think they mean exacerbate existing provision problems. So the Swansea taxpayer is going to be required to fund the, and enable the creation of private profit. Now, the officer said it isn't, but I actually consider that to be a material planning matter. Planning applications for large residential or commercial developments are always considered both in their wider societal context and their impact on council responsibilities, as you did with the, ap with the application before you, before this one, um, and which you're going to come back to later. It's usual to attach in those conditions a section 106 or whatever it's called agreement to the permission requiring contributions to schools, highways and so on, which would be consequent on the development. Our own officers tell us that if this development goes ahead, it will, as with the large developments that I refer to, adversely impact on Swansea's already strained service provision. I fail to see the difference between the two of them. 
I will end, Chairman, with two practical points. And at some point, if the committee is minded to approve the application, I would like to suggest for its approval three additional conditions. But the first of my two practical points is that the location on most of my road is unsuitable. We're told that the client profile of children is between 8 and 13 years of age. The lure, as Mr Pasha said, that they want to use it, the lure of the beach yards from their front door to children who may not ever have been to one before has to be considerable. And with an extremely busy four-lane highway to cross, with no roadside barriers to prevent immediate access, and the crossings some distance away from the front door of the house also seems to me to pose an obvious danger. The second point is that approval of this application would also remove much needed housing for local people, albeit HMOs, but they are nevertheless needed. So for those reasons, Chairman, I would urge the committee to refuse the application. Perhaps you can advise me now whether you want me to take the points, the conditions now, or at some point of the committee's minded to approve. Well, it's, it's up to you to mention them now, if you'd like. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. If the committee is minded to approve it then, Chairman, I'd like to propose three conditions. The applicant's reference to parking and access, I find somewhat strange. They propose some sort of taxi service with cars allowed to park on site, together with a curious arrangement with a, quote, local transportation company in the highly unlikely event, quote, it is required. But they do consider that the, that parking provision to be adequate. So my first proposal for a condition is to add one that says no residence parking would be permitted to the property. I also ask that I'm also uh, I ask that because I'm also aware that there's a similar facility elsewhere in the ward that has got residence parking for its staff. The second condition, and this is probably uh, um, a little more contentious, the office report states that the concerns of social services have been carefully considered, but not a, a material planning consideration. For the reasons I gave you before, I dispute that. I therefore ask you to consider adopting a requirement, as you're doing with the other application, for some sort of Section 106 or appropriate measure that would secure a reasonable and commensurate financial contribution to support, support future service provision for the children in, in this company's care, and for which they are going to be getting very well paid, but we are going to be providing the external services. And my third one, um, is that Mr. Pasha was quite clear about both in his submission and in his, his submission to the committee this morning, this afternoon, as to what the children, what this home would not be used for. So I would like you to add a further condition that would limit permission given to a children's home only and not for those other uses uh, that Mr. Pasha says they're not going to do in the potential event that the committee can't get enough clients to make the practical. Uh, proposal work. Um, that's it, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, three minutes, eh? Right, I've um, got some hands up already wishing to speak. I got first off is Councillor Black. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just got a couple of questions uh, rather than to speak. Um, first of all, the officer, uh, Liam, outlined a whole range of um, uses to which this property was not going to be put to use um, which are presumably on the assurances of the applicant i just want to ask um accept that absolutely that the applicant is not going to put them the properties the uses he's outlined but do, do those uses come under the class c2 which we're voting on in other words could some future user put it to those uses and then the second question i had a look on the website to to see a um, bit more about this application earlier on and I noticed there's no application form up there, so it's very difficult to actually find out what the who the company is is actually running this site. And there's no there's nothing in there at all about that. So a bit more information about that will also be ha very helpful as well. Okay, I'll come back to that, shall we? Right, next, uh, Councillor Smith. You moved in, Paulette. Yeah, Councillor Richard Lewis. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I agree entirely with David Phillips, what he has said, but I, to me, the location on the busiest road in Swansea could be, to my way, uh, um, an absolute disaster. 
the traffic goes up there night and day. And on the other side of the road, you've got the, the beach and all the rest of it on there. Now, kids will be rushing out of there. They cross the road. I think it's, it, it's a death trap. And I, I'm, I'm really worried about kids in that location. Where they are elsewhere in the ward, it, it doesn't matter. As long as it's on, on a small side road, it's okay. But this road is the busiest. And I, I agree 100% with David Phillips, but I would, I would actually go for refusal. And my best bet is refusal of this. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Smith, you're back with us. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, oh, first of all, apologies for joining the committee late. I do apologise for that. And also, I think I'd be better abstaining from this item because I joined too late to hear all of the officers' presentation. Thank you. Um, Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with uh, my colleague, uh, Councillor Phillips, but I also looking into the report, the social services report, and one to sit, they make uh, six comments there that I am totally uneasy with, and I cannot uh, approve this, so I'll be against. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Sam. Right. Councillor Evans. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, my concern is a review of the objections from Joanne, for instance, is not in the right location, safety of children, safeguarding, all good, good sort of things and important things. And similarly with the Councillor Phillips, he's raised a, a lot of issues which I empathy with. But the long and short of it, are they... Uh, sort of objections which are material planning considerations. Now, we haven't heard from the officer or the legal officer on these points. So the the um, the other queries in the report, which um, have just been raised by Councillor Anderson, the six points in social services, yes, I'm not yes. happy with them, but are they material planning considerations? Because if they're not, we cannot use that or take account of it you know, deliberation. So, can we have some advice on that, please? Yeah, we'll get that. Uh, we're going to finish speakers yet, Councillor, and then we we'll come back for that. Councillor Mary Jones. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've got two points. Um, we, we saw the um, view or the photograph of the rear of the property, and now we know there are two parking spaces within there. But what outside amenity space is there with this property? I know we've got the beach opposite. I am well aware where it is. But most of the homes in Sandfields have got outdoor space for their young children to play. And it, it looks to me they've got a playroom inside, but we all know through the lockdown how important it is for people to have access to outside space, not just walk into parks or beaches. So I'm quite concerned that this is all building and no outside space. And my second point is um, something that Councillor David Phillips said, and I actually agree with him because I know from another scrutiny that um, when children come to us, uh, we have to educate them. So we have to pay for them. But there's no mention at all of what um, uh, we're going to do about them going to the local schools. Are they oversubscribed? So I do agree that maybe we should be asking for 106 monies, if we're able to, so that uh, the young people are um, we're getting money for their provision within the school system. Because, as we know, it's a very congested area, uh, very good schools in the area, and I'm sure that uh, the children because they're looked after children, will put um, strain on our resources. And I really feel that we need to take a very close look at the impact this uh, application will have on the residents and the surrounding area. But I do want to know about the immunity space. Yeah, okay. thank you. We will get some advice at the end. Uh, Councillor Burton, Sean next, then Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Chairman. A number of uh, points. Uh, one, the safety, especially of eight-year-olds, on such a busy thoroughfare 
I don't think it's it's uh, a good idea unless they're adequately supervised and there are railings to stop them running out onto the road. Because obviously, from what I've heard, these children are going to be coming from outside the area. The lure of the beach is going to uh, affect the situation because it's going to get them wanting to cross the road quickly and it's a very dangerous road. On the parking, there are two parking spaces, but 25 members of staff. How many are going to be on duty at one time and where are they going to park? And finally, I'm very concerned about the response by social services. And in the report, it says that they can be controlled under separate legislation. Has this been looked at under separate legislation? And is this application premature? And can we defer it to get further information? Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Thomas? Oh, yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I apologise. I'm in the same position as Councillor Paulette Smith. It took me uh, 12 minutes to actually make a connection. And um, it, that was in the main, in the middle of um, Liam Jones's presentation, so I find myself unable to um, to vote on this issue. Um, therefore, I shall be abstaining also. Right, then, I got Jonathan, your hand is up. I know there are a number of issues, perhaps yourself or Liam might be able to answer. Do you want to speak first, Jonathan? Thank you, Chair. I'll just make a, a, a couple of points. Um, regarding a section 106 uh, contribution that's been uh, suggested, uh, I don't think members would be able to just in, uh, request that now because it would have to be uh, assessed uh, against the community infrastructure levy regulations and we'd have to see what kind of uh, contribution you know social services would would request because they, they would be the ones who would have to request a contribution. So uh, if members are minded to request that, that would I think the matter would have to be deferred for that issue to be, to be looked at. Uh, it was also raised uh, uh, whether what matters by Councillor Evans um, were material considerations. And yes, uh, as, as stated in the report uh, on uh, page 87, you know, matters relating to crime, antisocial, behaviour, perceived issues of antisocial behaviour uh, and are not planning material uh, considerations for consideration for you here today and the appropriateness uh, of, of, the, of the children's home. So it would only be the planning material considerations that you would uh, be considering uh, today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Liam, sorry, Liam can uh, expand further. Liam, did you want to add anything? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I've just been jotting down a few notes. Um, I mean, Councillor Black, you said the application form wasn't available. Um, I've just had a look now. I, I did see the application form. I mean, the applicant is Jake Lynch. Um, now, there's no company attributed on the application form, um, and, and that that is the name of the applicant. And then, uh, as mentioned, really, it seeks planning permission for a C2 use. Um, now, C2 is defined as use for the provision of residential accommodation and care to people in need of care, uh, use as a hospital or nursing home, use as a residential school, college or training centre. So, I mean, if members are concerned that they could, you know, a different use other than a children's home could uh, be an issue, you, you can restrict a planning permission to a specific use. Uh, that's been applied for. For example, in this case, you could restrict it specifically to a children's home and you can define, um, you know, further uh, the use if it was to be an issue. Um, you know, there are a number of, uh, you know, a number of those uh, bullet points I mentioned. They they came off the applicant's statement, uh, to, to be honest, and they were just, just uh, setting out what this property wouldn't be. Um, we have to have regard in our mind that this property has planning permission for HMO, so it could uh, be turned into a HMO. Uh, you can have separate people live in there, um, and we know, you know, that there could be issues arising from that use. Um, 
I mean, what we can't do is uh, control the behaviours of people. Um, we can only control the nature of the use uh, being applied for. So, you know, except there's concern over, you know, use as a children's um, home. But we also have to have regard to the fact it's uh, lawful use as a dwelling house uh, with seven bedrooms. Now, there's not anything stopping children living in that property under a family umbrella. And, you know, effectively, you know, some of the arguments there in terms of uh, you know children crossing the road etc um, would be no different to a dwelling house with children living in there so it, it's a struggle really from a planning ground to to object to it um, I mean what we've said is the um, the separate legislation covering this matter um, and we would not control that legislation so so the the legislation is set up by the care inspector at Wales so I touched on that really I mean there's a requirement for a care home to register with them so you know it could be the wrong way around of doing it but we don't have um, the control over those care homes and we don't input into that process so so we can only deal with material planning considerations and as Jonathan has said you know a lot of things being raised aren't material planning considerations that we can control um, you can go down the line of a seeking a section 106 agreement, but you need to know, uh, you need to have evidence to, to, to sort of set up why you're going down that route. Um, you'd have to evidence that this particular proposal will place a strain on services and have that evidence in hand to be able to argue a case on it. Um, so, so, so really that's where we, we are as officers. I mean, it, it's, um, it, it's a low scale really in terms of the care home and the provision being proposed. And that's set out in the report. Um, you know, th there is debate about um, when a, a C3 use changes. Um, so you you can you know utilise a C3 as a care home in certain aspects without needing planning permission. And there is a debate about that. Um, that, that, that is ongoing. But ultimately, they've applied for planning permission because they're required to do so. Uh, but but we we don't feel there's any sustainable grounds there to refuse it. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Chair, I have not the answer about amenity space. Oh yes, yes. Um, sorry. Um, yes, in terms of amenity space, I don't know if we can get the um, the block plan back up. Um, so I mean, I don't know if we can get the slide up showing it. So yeah, you can you can just sort of zoom in there. You've got the um, the property, and then you've got the two parking bays. Um, obviously, the existing property is is heavily built up, as are a number of properties in the area. Um, uh, so, if we just go in. There you go, you can kind of make it out there. But I mean, if you see the parking bays, they take up a certain amount of space and then you've, you've just got a slither of land to the side of that rear wing, uh, which is part of the built development. Now, now that's an existing situation, so we can't really change that. Um, I mean, arguably they are they are right next to the beach and they've got that, that provision in terms of outdoor space. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Um, Needed to cover there. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Matthew. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just quickly on the parking. Obviously, we uh, had to take into account the existing use of the building. It's a seven bedroom house, which would have a certain level of parking demand. Um, didn't have any spaces at all. Um, number of staff needed to be on site at any one time. It would require four spaces probably according to the parking standards. However, that needs to be balanced against the fact that it is a sustainable location. It's on a high frequency bus route. They're providing us with cycle parking. It's on the national cycle network. Um, and the surrounding streets are part of a residence parking zone, which anyone working in the building wouldn't qualify for a residence parking permit under the current policy. Uh, so taking all that into account, uh, we didn't feel that there were sufficient grounds, even given the shortfall of two spaces, to make an objection on this and for that objection to be sustained. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I've got a few hands coming back up again. Councillor Burton. Yes, Chair. Uh, can I have a response on the control the social services have? 
um, has it been looked at under separate legislation and is this application premature? And I'm unhappy with the response on parking. 25 members of staff, obviously they're not going to be there at more than uh, at the same time, but they need four parking places. They're not going to come in by bikes, etc. Uh, or public transport because it doesn't stop on Eastermouth Road and I would suggest that there is a need for at least the four parking spaces and I agree with Mary there's inadequate space outside for these children especially eight-year-olds to be able to let off steam if they can't get out the back, they're going to go out the front and they're going to cross a busy road to get onto the beach. And can can the item be deferred until we get further information? We'll come to it. Somebody who's going to second that, we'll have a vote on that shortly then, yeah? All right, just got a few hands up and then we can come back to that. Um, Councillor Evans. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I support what Councillor Burtonshaw has just raised. Uh, my point is basically, um, I, was, I was concerned with the sort of the the objector, Mr. Joseph or Joseph, sorry. He, in his uh, speech to us, his version of residential children's home provision in Swansea is totally different to what social services has said. He's, he's challenged that and written to them and he hasn't had a reply. Where the truth is, you know, whose fault that is, I don't know. So, you know, is the situation in Swansea, for instance, are residential children's home overprescribed or not? Because social services are saying they are, and yet, according to Joseph, when he uh, put his objection forward, his research shows that it's not. And he gave clear figures when he, when he told us that. So, you know, I'm not happy with that. I think social services come and answer the question and we should need to know that answer to that question. My final speaker is Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm happy to second uh, deferment if uh, Councillor Burtonshaw was proposing it. If not, I propose it, but I want to know about education. I mean, when we have anything uh, else to do with um, building houses, we always know about the impact on the local schools, and there's nothing here to show that. Also, when we get new applications for new houses, amenity space is very important. And, you know, an eight-year-old wants to swing in the garden or someone to kick football around or something, and you haven't got anybody on tap to keep running across Mumbles or oh, it's my throat, sorry. And I, I'm sorry, we keep saying, oh, the beach is nearby, but this is about children being safe. And they can't play out in the front garden for that very reason. So with the parking spaces, there's absolutely no uh, quality amenity space there. And really, if it is good to be a children's home, well, I'm very sorry, it's more like an institution than a children's home. Can I say for Mary, I am prepared to move deferment. All right. Well, I, you won't be not your second in it, Councillor Jones? Am yes, I am second in it. So, okay, so members, if you've just heard that there's been a request for deferral of the matter to gather some further information, I guess, and a few other items that need clarity. Can I see those in? We will take a, uh, a vote shortly then, Gareth, when you're ready. Um, yeah. So, for those in favour of deferral. Members, I will go through the names. This is a, a vote for deferral, for, to seek further information. So, Councillor Sarah Anderson. Four. Councillor Peter Black. Four. Councillor Newbury. Four. Councillor Will Evans. Four. Councillor Mary Jones. Four. Councillor Mike Lewis. Four. Councillor Richard Lewis. Four. Councillor Paulette Smith. Four. Four. Councillor Des Thomas. Abstain. Councillor Linda Taylor Lai. Four. Four. Councillor Mike White. 
for Councillor Morland. That would be so, yes, I will vote. Well, that has been deferred to the next meeting. Chair, could I just come in uh, a second, just just to ask really, what what do you members expect in us to bring back to the next meeting? I think that's critical, really, because we'll go away from today's meeting, um, and it's just really being clear on what what you're expecting to see, really, because I, you know, we've obviously given the information as as we've seen um, in terms of following our consultation process. So um, it it's just just a bit a bit of guidance, really. Chair, perhaps social services can talk to the applicant and we can get further information there and I'd like further information on the parking facilities and the lack of play area out the rear of the building. Yes, I mean in terms of the parking and the play areas, I mean that we, we can't change that. I think we, we've we've set out in the report and the highway officer's given the view. Um, we feel is acceptable. So, I mean, I, I don't think we're going to get any more evidence uh, in, in that respect. And particularly well, somebody mentioned that there was a uh, need to get um, information for, from the education department. It, it was me. I did put my hand up, uh, Chair. Yes. I want to know about the impact on the local schools and where these children are likely to be sent to school. Because if they're 13 year olds, they have to go to comprehensive and and thinking that they're not used to the area and they're expected to walk. I don't even know where they're supposed to be going. The whole report doesn't give us enough information for us to make an informed choice. So we need education's input for the impact on the actual schools and where the, the schools are likely to be. Was there any other matters? Because I got two other hands up. Are they yeah. relevant to? Yes, Chairman. Yes. What I like. Chairman, they showed some very nice pictures of the uh, development. I think the play area, to my view, is extremely important. I'd like to see a few pictures of what the play area would look like uh, as it is at the moment. If that's possible. And Councillor Anderson? Yeah, it's still um, them, them six items. But the real one that is worrying me, Chair, is item six. This is not an area we would currently consider. Surely if our social services are saying that we should take a child as a right under the UNCHR as a right of a safe place to live and play. And okay. that's what I'm worried about with item number six. Um, yeah. yeah, OK, well, I think we've got the list then out then, yeah? I think that's done. Yeah, thank you, folks. And can we go back to Susan? Yeah, yeah. Right, can we go back to uh, Kevin Gold with Colliery site now, and being as hopefully Alex Williams is with us now. Hello, Alex Williams, are you there? You need to unmute yourself. Hello, right, can you hear me there? Yes, thank you very much. Oh, there and, we are. Uh, my, apo my apologies for earlier. I was watching the meeting, but um, I didn't realise there was a join button I'd press. So, so we can um, find this one, the committee then, please, uh, Alex. OK, um, so thank you for letting me speak today. I really appreciate it. Um, before I get on to talking about my objection to this application, I want to first state that whilst many people who have objected have objections to the development on this site, my objection is a loan to the request by Pubble to get out of paying for their contributions towards Gowden Primary. It is just that. Social and affordable housing is good and is needed, and I have myself no objections to the site being developed. The reason why everyone, me included, are so annoyed is that those of us with pupils in Gowden Primary can see the school despite being new, struggling. My child is in a class of 31. It is a class where they cannot do maths at the same time as they do not have enough chairs and tables. A class that only has a classroom because the school has turned a staff room into a teaching space. As a parent, I see every year the oversubscription in Gowden Primary and the struggles and the appeals the parents have getting their children a place. We are now told, and 
quite frankly, I do not believe the report from Education Department, that there will be space in the primary next year, 2022. Not only a little space, the Education Department claimed that a school that has been oversubscribed for years will have 26 spaces. So we are to believe that for the first time in my memory, the school which has been significantly over capacity will all of a sudden be under capacity. Education in their report also go on to argue when talking about whether they want the £272,000 for Gowden Primary. In this case, where the Section 106 money is not enough to build an extension, considering the viability of education being able to utilise a small contribution, how they refer to £272,000, education has no option but to agree to forgo the contribution for the English medium primary school. I find this staggering. Stating that £272,000 is not much money, so on the basis of that, education would rather not have it, I just cannot believe. Additionally, please note the Education Department only produced figures to September 2022. That's just about one year hence. By the time the site is finished, it'll be 2024 at least. We need to look that far forward. Additionally, during lockdown, virtually every young couple I know has got one in the oven. Those children are going to filter through to the primary school. I've also been unable to confirm with the Education Department that the Sempty House site being built on Penadre off George Manning Way in Gowerton has been included in their calculations for school numbers. To me, because I cannot see it in the tables, it has not. This alone will tip the balance by 20 pupils and not in Pobble's favour. In trying to get the information together on this, I have since the application or the reapplication went in, been sat at home every night waiting for the updated Education Department's response, as have many of us in Gowerton. Last Friday, I inquired with the officer dealing with the application where the Education Department's was. The response was, I was told it had not been uploaded due to a glitch. It has now been uploaded, but the publication date visible on the Council's website states 25th of March, whereas in fact it was only published on Friday the 9th after the consultation period has ended. Planning will tell you that there is no requirement to consult on a 106 agreement. Well, hey, maybe there isn't, and if there isn't, it's a massive anomaly. But the Council have chosen to consult, and having chosen consult, they should do it properly. In withholding, even by accident, the crucial document, I have to suggest a deferral, so that people have time to review what is education's vital response. It's not a democratic outcome to withhold the pivotal document, even if by mistake, until after the consultation period. Now I come on to the matter of property prices and the valuation of the site. Um, so Pubble can appeal the Section 106 agreement if they have higher than expected abnormal costs. Pubble bought the project of a property sourcing company called Urban Style Land Limited. On the website of Urban Style Land Limited, the company are trumpeting their success in selling the project to Pobble. Urban Style state that of the site that they have provided a complex remediation and stabilisation solution to unlock the site. Given this, it is hard to imagine that the remediation works costed by Urban Style Limited in their sale to Pobble were not costed into Pobble's purchase price of 2.1 million. Pobble bought the site and fought a lengthy battle for planning, which many local residents warned about remediation costs. Pobble now have a remediation cost of two and a half million pounds. To me, and to most people in the pub, it sounds very affordable for a 16 million pound site. And what's more, one has to wonder how much urban style projected the remediation to be. Two pound fifty? I can't believe the remediation wasn't initially costed at several millions. Mr. Williams, can I remind you of five minutes? Is that I'm, I'm, well, I've not got a lot, lot to go, if you can tolerate me, please. I'd like to draw the, uh, the members' attention to the report that this enabled, enabled this. Pobble must justify to the council in an open book exercise why the development is affordable. We have values in that report 
43 grand for a three bed semi, 67 up to 140 for a four bed house. I have to say to you, those are terribly undervalued. Well, are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I will stop there. I've only got two. Sorry? Okay. okay. Um, no, right. Going back to going back to what we heard earlier, this Christo with us and just wanted to, yeah, they wanted to um, remind us of what this actual application is about. Yeah, so just just to recap, um, obviously the the, pre the previous application, which which was refused by committee, uh, sought to make various changes to the 106 uh, relating to the development. Um, that was that was rejected by committee uh, as committee members were not satisfied with the changes to the type of affordable housing being proposed back then. Um, so this this latest application um, addresses that in that the changes to affordable housing uh, are no longer proposed. So the the originally proposed uh, ten year mix of affordable housing uh, re basically remains the same, um, and the the changes, as I explained earlier, are those which are set out a paragraph um, four point. 4.4. So, in terms of the education contributions, um, what we are saying to you as a committee is that the the, the development itself um, generates 27 children which will need to go to the local English medium school. And our colleagues in education are telling us that next year there will be 26 spaces available in that school. So there will be a shortfall of one space. And what our colleagues in education are saying is the amount of money that you would normally ask for one for one pupil space is so low, it's not really worth asking for because you, you cannot do enough with that money. So I, I know the objector mentioned that education was suggesting that, that the figure of 200 272,000 was a worst gas ask for. That's not correct. Um, if I can again direct you to paragraph 4.13, um, what, what the education department have said is that um, it is considered that requesting a financial contribution for one, one primary school child is unreasonable and uh, unnecessary. So that's what we are saying. We are not saying the 272,000 pound isn't sufficient. We are saying there's only a shortfall of one one child space as of next year, based on the projection figures that we've got. So th those those projection figures are the the most kind of up to date figures that have been provided to us, um, and they've obviously changed since the application was first presented to committee back in 2018. So um, hence the reason we are not we we are. Kind of content to ask for the um, contributions towards just the two Welsh schools. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any member wish to speak? No. Okay. Oh, well, okay. I can see. Oh, yeah, comes to black first. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I mean, I understand the the mathematics which are being laid out to us. Education originally asked for £670,000. And it just seemed to me a bit bizarre that that, that, that that where that figure came from, given the number of places which they're now talking about needing. Um, you moved it yourself, Councillor. You're on mute, Peter. Sorry, I, I, sorry. I'll start again. Then I thought I was not <laughs> mute. Yeah, um, edu education originally asked for six hundred and seventy thousand pounds. I mean that that's set out in the document which is on the council's website, and also the letter which, uh, which was sent, I think, sent to planning members, which has been effectively condensed down on on the planning website. That isn't the entire letter. 
And it just seems to me that there seems to be some confusion, certainly on my part, as to who exactly does this calculation. Because in the letter which, um, which you circulated, Chair, which is not in, in its entirety on the website, education is basically saying this is planning making this decision, not them. They just say this is how much we'd like and planning then decide this is how much you're going to get. And yet, uh, and I just wonder how we've managed to got from £670,000 down to such a small amount. Why was it reduced in the first place? And then... You lifted yourself again, Peter. I don't know what's happening. It seems to be, I'm not touching anything, honestly. Um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to understand the process by which it went from £670,000 to roughly about £370,000 and then uh, then further reduced to the amount which we're now being asked to, asked to, uh, to give. I, I don't understand that process at all as to where the original figure came from, where the second figure came from and why we end up with the third figure. And that isn't clear to me at all. I just would like some more ex explanation as to how we got there. OK, Councillor Richard Lewis. Well, Chairman, quite rightly, we had this turned down at, at the last meeting, which I think was appropriate. Um, and to be quite frank about it, I, I find uh, what Peter Black just said to start off at 600,000 and then come down to a, a, a much lesser sum. Uh, and then what we've heard, and I frankly, I, I am aware of what is going on in the school. It is rammed. The English school is rammed. There's no other word for it. And for the, them to say that there's no pupils going and to say that the school will have 26 uh, vacancies, I. I I just wonder sometimes who makes up these figures. And I certainly, as far as I'm concerned, I would not be prepared to vote in favour of this application because I think it it needs it needs actually a very good invest investigation. And I think if anybody votes for this today, they are giving um, a password to the people to come up with figures as if they've been plucked out of the, out, out of the sky. Uh, to be honest with you, um, if I was doing this in business, I would be out of business fairly quick. Chairman, I'm, I'm totally against this application. Thank you. Councillor White. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, a, a bit a bit concerned really with Pobble over the 106 last month. Obviously, it was stated that they would pay 50% of the 106 on the first occupation. And then the, the, the remaining 50% after the end of the um, development. Now, obviously, we've got to look at what's come back again on page 22.416 is that they want to pay now um, the rule amount on 50% of the of the um, of, of, of the actual development. Um, as you know, this is the, the third time I think this has come forward. And of course, the issues are around 106 agreements. Um, I'm very skeptical. It's perhaps, well, they might come back again, say, for next month and ask them, say, can they move the payment to the 75th um, occupation of the of the development? But I think if, if they've accepted and signed that they're going to pay on the 1st uh, for 50% and on the 50th, or, or, or on the completion, we should hold them to that chair, and uh, I, and that 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 is my that 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 is my concern. Okay, thank you, Councillor Evans. <laughs> Sorry, right. Um, the points made by Councillor Black were precisely the comments I made in the last meeting wasn't at all happy. Following that, as we all know, all members of this committee have received an email via the chair from the director of education explaining what the process was. So Councillor Lewis would have received that. So I don't know, I can't really um, support what he's saying, but my concern is this. It's not the planning department that set the figures. If if the education department, because there's lack of uh, facilities, etc., want to make a, 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 um, a claim, so they put a bid in, but that bid has got to be supported by a business case, not guesswork. It's a business case. So whether the business case was correct, you know, it it, it 
it, it's up to, you know, I'm not convinced it was, but according to the director, the business case was right. Well, I would be so way out with the figures. I just can't understand it. Okay, thank you. And I got uh, Councillor Mary Jones. Uh, thank you, Chair. I mean, we're hamstrung because if you recall at the last meeting, we wanted to put in something for refusal about education and we were advised not to. It was only about the affordable housing. They've got around that now and yet we're still stuck with the uh, contribution to education, which we all seem to be agreeing is not uh, the right amount. And I totally agree with Peter Black, Councillor Peter Black, that we need to know why on earth this has come down from so much to such a small amount. I mean, we accepted the bit about the crossing, but we still didn't accept the bit about how uh, the education. And yes, I know that you met education, uh, I think Councillor Lloyd, um, but one minute we're saying one thing. I mean, the previous uh, um, item we've just debated, it's not in there at all. And now this one, it's just dwindling. And we're left then to struggle to find, uh, to yeah, educate these uh, young people. There must be a better way of doing this. I mean, as I said, it's only come back because they got round the uh, affordable housing and now we're stuck because we have got major issues about education but it looks as if we can't turn it down. So I am really, really disappointed in this. I understand. I've got no other hands up. No. Did any Christy, do you want to come back? Anything at all? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah certainly, Chair. Um, so in, in terms of, if, if I could just kind of briefly explain how we calculate the education contribution. So the, the way we calculate it is actually set out in the council's um, SPG on planning obligations. So, um, we, you know, going back to when the original application was granted, at, at the time we thought that the development was going to comprise about a hundred hundred houses. Okay, so the the in the SPG, what the SPG says is that for every um, for every hundred houses, thirty one primary purpose will be generated and 22 secondary purpose will be generated. So you've got a 31 and 22. Um, you've also then got to apply a ratio to determine how many of those children are likely to go to the Welsh schools and the English schools. OK, so um, from when this calculation was done, it was anticipated that 26 children would go to the local English primary school and five would go to the Welsh primary school. 22 would go to the English secondary and three would go to the Welsh secondary school. So that, that's the kind of split. From there, the, the SPG indicates that for each primary school child, we need £10,372 and for each secondary school child we need um, 15848 okay so what our colleagues in education said is that if you if you add up all of the children that were generated by the development so that's 31 primary 22 secondary so total of 57 kids if you work it all out the figure was 670,000 but that figure is based on there being no capacity in any of the schools. So if, if none of the schools had any capacity, we would have been asking for £670,000. But obviously, if the schools have got capacity to take children, those spare capacity spaces have got to be taken away from the amount of children generated by the development. Now, when we run those figures back in 2018, um, it was agreed between us and education that the, the, the figure of or the money that was required um, totaled 369,000. Um, and that was based on there being um, sufficient capacity in the um, in the English secondary school, which is obviously out and comprehensive, but there be an insufficient capacity in the two Welsh schools and Gowden primary, which is where we reached the figure of three six nine. Now, since then, 
the figures have changed again. And what we are saying to you is that the figure of 200, we, we needed 272,000 for Gowerton Primary when we run the figures in 2018. But education is saying there is going to be surplus capacity in that school now. So we do not need that sum of money for, for Gowerton Primary. The only sum of money we need is the money for the two Welsh schools, which is where which, which is what now gives us our figure of um, forty eight thousand for and forty eight thousand for the Welsh pri primary and forty seven thousand for the Welsh comprehensive school. So, so it's a combination of there being capacity in two thousand and eighteen and the projection figures changing, which mean that the required sum of money for education has, has drastically reduced. I mean, as you know, as a council, um, we can only ask for the the sum of money which is required to make the development acceptable. So we can't ask for any more or or, or any less in most cases. Um, and I, I know I, I accept that some committee members think that the developer is sort of chipping away at the required contributions, if you like, but. The one thing I would say is that if the original planning application was submitted to us now for the first time, we would only be asking for the one or six contributions which we've set out in the recommendation. That That is all that we can ask for because of the projection figures. We can't ask for any more or any less. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Black and Jonathan wants to speak. So you're calling me in first, are you? Yes, please. Sir. Yeah, um, I mean, I understand. I understand the process which um, has just been described, and it makes it sound like this is a joint decision between education and planning. But the letter which you circulated to us, Chair, it clearly says. In this instance, education officers sought a contribution of £670,000, but this became a planning recommendation of £327,000. And I quote here now, with no further consultation, we did not change our mind, but simply had to accept that this was as much as we were going to be offered. So, I mean, you know, OK, planning have made this, this calculation, but it does seem to me that this hasn't been made in conjunction with education. So, you know, it, I, I don't see where these departments are working together on this. Okay, Jonathan. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I just want to uh, bring to members' attention uh, in the report, page uh, 19. Um, in any application to uh, consider modification of a section 106 agreement, members should consider: Does the obligation still serve a useful planning purpose? And the case law. Uh, behind this uh, requires members to look at whether the revised uh, contributions uh, serve the development equally well. So as uh, officers in the report have, have, have laid out the revised contributions, they would say that, that this complies with this requirement. Uh, and I would also then um, bring members' attention to this needs to be balanced against the community infrastructure levy regulations, um, which require, as I mentioned last time, all planning obligations to be reasonable in scale and kind directly related to the, the development and necessary to make it acceptable in planning terms. So as uh, Chris said, we can, we can only, only uh, request what uh, is justifiable. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor White, would you hand up again? Yes, thank you, Chair. I just wanted clarification that on the original um, 106 in the last meeting about if they signed the agreement to pay 50% uh, of the 106 to the Welsh schools at the first uh, occupation. Um, and also, you know, if they signed up to that, we can we uh, all, all the development to that? You know, because um, you know, they've come back to ask that they pay the hundred percent on the fiftieth occupation of the of of a property. 
you know, if, if they've said they, they're going to pay an initial upfront um, 50% on the first uh, occupation, but at least then, you know, something would be going into education from, of, of the developer. Just ask for clarification that if, if they have signed that, then we can uh, hold, 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 hold them to that if possible. Yeah, thanks. thanks, yeah. Is that possible, Jonathan, or, or we? Thank you, Chair. I'd have to uh, check the uh, agreement to see what was uh, signed up to. But if that was in was in the original agreement, then that's what we would uh, request. We have there hasn't been. I'm not aware of uh, any request to change that requirement. So as there would have to be in another section 106 now uh, with the new um, obligations, if if members approve, so that those terms would be the same. Because I, I don't believe. They have requested that that's been changed, Chris. I could actually have a quick look at the agreement. Who I have, yeah, so they, they made that request as part of the application that came before committee last time, as far as I can see, because uh, the, the recommendation last month was that the, um, the the education contribution be paid on the occupation of the fifth year dwelling, which is which is this basically the same trigger point as what we are proposing now as part of this application. So, um, I, I, from speaking to the case officer, our, our, the education department were satisfied with receiving the money at, at that stage, Councillor White. Okay. Yeah, just to clarify, you're on page 22 of the report, the last paragraph, um, education officers have confirmed that change in the, the trigger point is acceptable and would advise that it would actually be more useful in terms of directing the funds on the previously agreed trigger point. So education have indicated it's better to, to pay it up the 50th house rather than up front. So 100% of the 50th house rather than split 50-50, it would allow it to be better directed. Okay. Okay then, Councillor White. So, I want to have something and... Uh, Sorry. Yes, yes. My my point is, chair, because we've had uh, a few amendments already by Pobble, is that uh, they they don't come back again next month before the ink is dry in this agreement. That's my only well, concern, that, really. That happened at any uh, with any case, could it? But now, with what we've got, Councillor White, I can't see any hands up. So we've heard from. Uh, case officer, we've heard from uh, Alex Williams, objector, and we've read the report ourselves. So now we can um, move to vote on this matter now. And uh, Gareth, when you're ready, please, we can. Um, yes, the recommendation is for approval. Yes, sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah. As I'm like on page 24. So, Councillor Sarah Anderson? For. Councillor Peter Black? Abstain. Councillor Jim Burtonshaw? For. Councillor Will Evans. Councillor Evans. Four. Thank you. Councillor Mary Jones. Abstain. Councillor Mike Lewis. Four. Councillor Richard Lewis. Totally against, Chairman. Councillor Paulette Smith. Four. Councillor Des Thomas. Four. Councillor Linda Tyler Lloyd. Against. Councillor Mike White. For. Councillor Paul Lloyd. Thank you. Uh, Eight four. Two against. Two abstentions. There you are. So that's carried. Thank you very much. Chris, and then we'll move on to the um, next item is the former boys club. I put. Uh, on the hill there, and we find that on page 90 the uh, report begins, and that's Liam, that was it. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'll take you through this one. So, in this case, full planning permission is sought uh, for the change of use and redevelopment of the building from its former uh, community use facility to provide 23 residential units uh, with a roof extension new access, infrastructure and landscaping works. Uh, the existing site comprised of a part two storey, part three storey detached building at the top of a sloping site located at the top of Baptist Well Place along Berwick Terrace. Uh, 
Do we have the presentation chair to? The building is split into two distinct parts uh, with what appears to be the original two story pitched roof building and then attached to a three story flat roof uh, addition. Building originally used as a social club, however, it's not been occupied for a significant uh, length of time and it's been boarded up for security reasons. So this particular application orig originally came in in August 2020. Uh, I don't I don't see anything there, Liam. Big problem with that side of it for a minute. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not controlling it myself. Um, yeah. 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 Ah, here we go. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, so there's the application site. You can see the top of Baptist Well Place um, with Berwick Terrace there. So the application originally came in in August 2020, um, a full period of consultation undertaken at that stage. Uh, there's been no public objections raised in response to the application and it's on your agenda as a major development. So in terms of the, um, the application itself, um, the property is positioned within the Swansea urban area. It's predominantly residential um, as an area. The use for flats can therefore be considered acceptable. It's noted that uh, policy SI2 requires that important community facilities such as social clubs should be preserved unless it's demonstrated the use is defunct, replaced nearby or well served in the local area by existing uses. Property's been vacant for a significant period of time. It's allowed to fall into a state of disrepair. Attempts appear to be made to bring the building into beneficial use. However, none were successful in the property um, was put on the market for sale in 2015 by Swansea Council. In recent years, the property has been targeted for antisocial behaviour, uh, dis despite security fence, and there have been numerous break-ins and arson attacks. Towards the end of 2020, an arson attack caused significant damage to the property, leading to further concerns about the stability and safety of the building. So it's clear the existing um, function of the building um, as a community facility in, in terms of any of the evidence we have anyways is, is no longer required. Um, furthermore, the building is in desperate need of redevelopment. I'll show you some photos later now. Um, it's considered um, on that basis the principle of development for uh, residential use is acceptable and it's, it's encouraged by our policies. Uh, so if we cycle through, so if we start with this slide, um, so this sets out the application site um, and the building, the proposal. So you've got um, a car parking area, you can see the entrance there at the left of the site. So um, on your junction, uh, there, there'll be a retaining wall surrounding that and, and there's your car parking for the flats. Uh, bear with terrace um, then to the right and then you've got a visitor service entrance um, as you come in the, in the side there with the front building frontage then on, on the right hand side. Um, and then a building, another building entrance. So the arrows show the entrances into the building. So if we cycle through the slides, we can um, get a feel for how the proposals are made up. Um, so that's the lower ground floor. So you've got an entrance into the building there, a series of uh, flats in, in the property. Uh, 23 residential units have been proposed. Um, each of the apartments, the one bed apartments, the majority of open plan kitchen living areas with uh, toilet areas. The flats are um, all meet the recommended 46 meter square standards, which are in a residential design guide. If we go through the, um, the various floor plans, because I uh, can't quite make up the detail from this, this uh, vantage point. So if we go through to the next, next slide. So there you've got the um, proposed elevations. So you can see the building um, largely flat roof in character, um, albeit the existing building is, is much flat roof um, in terms of its uh, design. Um, the existing building currently has little character, um, quite large. The fires resulted in a lot of walls being removed and it is in need of uh, change. The site is in a raised position, highly visible from um, public uh, realm. In, in essence, the proposal sees the remodeling of the building and increases the scale um, at the moment. As I said, the building has two separate parts. Um, plans here take a more coherent uh, design to the roof because um, at, at the moment you'll see from uh, some of the other slides, you've got um, a pitched roof and then it joins into the flat roof. Whereas in this instance, they're, they're creating more of a coherent structure, um, which obviously is a, is a flat roof. 
in terms of design um, and finishes, um, the set that on the drawings there, it's smooth render throughout with white UPVC windows, uh, structural glass panels for Juliet balconies and grey aluminium flashings. So the scheme will undoubtedly change the character of uh, the building, but um, officers consider the, the change in character is a positive one. Uh, it won't adversely harm the surrounding character of the area. So there's some visuals there that the applicants put in when the application first came in to us. So you can see the uh, one of the access points there into the site and we we'll cycle through. Um, so you can see the view there from the crossroads uh, looking back into the site. And then the next one should have um, the view looking at the Baptist well. So you've got the car park area in your left and the building there in the distance. So you'll see in the report originally our placemaking. Um, oh, there we go. There's there's photos when the application first came in. Um, so you can see it's the building is looking tired there in those uh, images and we cycle through the, the various images. You can uh, see, see, see what's happened to the building. So these were taken in, must have been uh, the late end of 2020. So you can see the view there from Baptist Well. Um, the view from Lower Down. And then the next series of photos then are the fire damage. So you can see the extent of um, these, these images were sent to us as part uh, later on in the application process. And you can see the roof is gone. Um, there's not much um, in terms of structure that left there really. I mean, some of the walls have had to come down for safety reasons. So, um, so in terms of the report, um, you'll see our placemaking heritage team did provide comments on the scheme um, early on with some design concerns. Um, so you will probably have read those concerns and they may, they may make you concerned about the scheme, but subsequently um, you'll see lower down in the report, they actually um, withdrew their concerns because um, amended plans were received, um, essentially dealing with their, their issues about the, the uh, the size of window openings, so they increased the window openings and added Juliet balconies, and that overcome the concerns of the placemaking heritage team. One of the other points raised, and um, I'm sure members may, may may have comments on this, um, is that it is a scheme proposing render, and obviously uh, there are examples in Swansea where uh, render has, has failed on buildings. So we've covered that under condition nine in your report. Um, which is to provide for an anti-fungicidal coating uh, with measures to reduce water running down the facade. So, so that condition deals with um, matters of detail, in including the render application to make sure that we, um, we we have full details of that render to ensure that it gives the best chance of success in the building. Other issues um, set out in the report, really highway safety. There's, so there's one update on your update sheet. Um, you'll see condition six, essentially really just to clarify um, the vehicle restriction um, of access along Berwick Terrace is to remain, but the existing road barriers will need to be recited further south in order for the proposed visitor and service entrance to the site to be accessed. To, um, Basically, at the moment, there's a there's a barrier which is preventing access um, into the site. So, so that would need to be recited um, uh, further south along Berwick um, Terrace in order to um, facilitate the development. So, so that condition is, is the wording of it's amended to take away the word remove and, and replace it with recite. So, it, that it's clear that uh, after the development takes place, that um, there will remain no access down that road. So in terms of parking, um, that's catered for in, in the scheme, the provision of 20 parking spaces. It does fall slightly short of standards, um, but owing to the sustainable location of the site and the provision of cycle storage facilities, this this is considered to be acceptable. Um, you know, we, we're on fringe of the city centre, so services are in, in walking distance essentially. Um, conditions are to be imposed to deal with other highway issues in terms of retaining wall structures, uh, provision of the parking area, laying out the access turning area and providing a safe uh, continuation of the footway along Baptist Well Place. So there's a section there that needs to be improved. Um, 
I, I understand some concerns have been raised locally about construction traffic potentially during the construction phase. So whilst we would not condition uh, construction management uh, statement or plan from the planning perspective in this instance, uh, the Highway Authority has control under Section 278 uh, agreement that would we'll, we'll need to be um, agreed with highways. Um, so a construction traffic management plan would form part of that agreement. Other issues, um, they're in your report. I mean, residential amenity, um, we've considered there would be no adverse harm to surrounding neighbours. Uh, in fact, the use for flats is more compatible than that of a social club. Um, the flats achieve the standards in terms of spaces. There's natural outlook and light in from the flats. We have identified one um, smaller issue in terms of um, amenity on, on page 104 of your report. Um, there is a flat there proposed um, on the lower ground floor, the open plan living, dining and kitchen area. It does it has one window and it's in the lower ground floor, one window serving it. Um, we, you know, it, it's not an ideal relationship, but on balance and uh, the reasoning given there in terms of um, safety aspects, in terms of uh, particularly facing the street aspect, we think it, uh, it is an appropriate, uh, acceptable relationship. So. Other issues, um, you know, this reference to BAT surveys. Um, so obviously, the, since the application has been in, uh, the building has been subject to um, fire damage. Uh, when, when, when the application originally came in, a BAT survey was submitted, which did identify some BATs in the wider area. Um, further support, um, uh, a report was submitted recently with BAT mitigation measures. So the applicant will need to apply to NRW for a BAT license. Um, albeit that it may be that there are no bats in the building as a result of the fire. So we have measures in place through conditions um, to deal with the, the bat mitigation. So in conclusion, um, officers are of the opinion that this is an acceptable form of development um, in terms of the principle, um, visual amenity, highway safety, ecology, um, and the, the loss of the, the social club is considered justified and we have no uh, grounds really to to, to refuse the application we feel is appropriate. Um, it'll, uh, the building, as you've seen from the photos, is in need of redevelopment and uh, you know, it's essential that, that we, uh, there is a scheme in place to allow that to happen. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Phillips, I know you're again board member. Uh, are you still with us? I am. Yeah. Yeah, when you're ready then, please. Um, it depends, Joe, but what I'd like to do first before you get into the discussion is I, I think that uh, I would like to recommend the committee visit the site because of its almost unique position, both in terms of location and especially access. Um, I think that the amendment that you've had today, to use the officer's expression, clarify the situation in regards to very Terrace. Uh, I think that we're to, what you've been removing or changing the word move to remove isn't really a clarification. It's a completely different, you, the condition as it was would have opened up Berwick Terrace. Um, this site, to those who know it, is located high on a hill and enjoys uninterrupted views across Swansea and is, is visible as you drive in clearly from the east. Now, um, the, the team that uh, commented, the officer commented on page 97 have changed their view call this a fantastic site that merits something better than this admittedly poor application. And I think the committee needs to see the site and understand the very limited, restricted width and difficult road access to it for the very large plant of vehicles that will be required during the construction phase. And I, that's, that's my reason for praying. Before we got into debate about it, Chairman, that really I think it would be useful for the committee to see it, to get some idea of the context in which this application is being considered. Not, not least the officer's comments, as I understood it, but perhaps Mr. Jones could clarify it, that the blockage on Berwick Terrace will be put back after construction, before occupation, which suggested to me they will be removed during construction. But firstly, if the committee agrees uh, to have a side visit, Chairman, then I, I would save the committee's time and restrict my observations to when you come back to reconsider it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you. 
Right, well, I got um, three speakers here. I got Councillor Des Thomas first, then Councillor Anderson, then Councillor Burton. Yeah, f thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I've got concerns about this. Um, it, it, it's a while since I've been to this area of, of, of the city. So whilst I was familiar at one time, and I and I remember very well the issues that we had with um, traffic using it as a rat run and the reasons why these uh, measures were taken to stop through traffic. Um, and there are certainly the, the, the report is littered with um, things that sort of um, grab grasp your attention things like um, shortfall in standards and indeed anything is better than what's there at present well i think i personally i would like to see what's there at present and i think a, a site visit would be would be helpful to the committee in, in coming to their decision so um if you need a, a member of the committee to move a site visit be held then i would be happy to do that chair Back to that. And I'd be happy to second, Chair. Sorry? Uh, Mike Lewis and I'd be happy to second. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Cheers. I've got Councillor Anderson, then Councillor Burton, sure. And then Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I too have uh, problems with this uh, application regarding its I it's partly in our ward, in Town Hill Ward. So I do see what I do share, I should say, uh, Councillor Phillips's uh, concerns, i.e. where you've got uh, the blockade there. That was put in place because of the antisocial behaviour of the, the car stealing days. Um, and I also have concerns about at the heavy um, indus industrial vehicles that are having to come into the ward and the access for them to get in there. So I have great concerns. So I too would be asking for a site visit for this to be third to today and for a site visit, please. Yeah, okay, I understand. Councillor Burton, show, and then Councillor Evans. Yeah. Um, I'm unhappy at this moment in time about a site visit because my concern are the flats or the apartments inside and they're not going to be seen on a site visit. I know the area, so I know the problems Councillor Phillips was talking about. But if you see on page 104, it does say that um, the suitability of the proposed flats, a key consideration is whether the flats provide sufficient usable space to achieve an acceptable standard, modern living, that is appropriate for health and well-being of the inhabitants. When you read about what's in some of the flats, you've got a kitchen with no window, but you've got a window in the bedroom, so you have to leave the bedroom door open to be able to have light into the flat. And my biggest concern is the ground floor flat, where the only light coming in is a, tall, a window that I, at my height, couldn't even see through, and it would leave in very little light. But uh, what the office is saying is that it provides adequate accommodation. To me, these are sub substandard accommodation with the lack of uh, light coming into these flats. The visual impact is unacceptable and I, it, to allow a shortfall in our standards doesn't say a lot for this authority when we are trying to house people in decent living accommodation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Evans is our last speaker. Well, sorry, I wouldn't have an objection to a site visit, although I know the area very well. Um, yeah. 
well, as a matter of interest, the, the, the building has been vacant and derelict for many, many, many years. And um, I, I would, as a matter of interest, how long was it put on the market by the council before it's been sold now, I presume? So, it's in the report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it is in the report, I understand. I did read it. In two thousand fifteen. It's a two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I can see no other hands up, and it's been moved and seconded that the, the item be deferred for a site visit. Uh, we, Chairman, we, before we go, can the officers comment on the adequacy of the uh, living accommodation? We can deal with that. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I mean, I can comment on that. Um, I mean, I do sure. bring, I don't know if we can bring the plans up. Is, is there a particular flat that you have issue with in terms of um, amenity? Because obviously, in the report, we've we've looked at the flats and we've come to a balanced view on the overall amenity that they provide. Um, we've identified in there um, so, some minor issues, I would say. Um, I don't, I don't think they're they're critical to. Um, refusal of this application. Um, all the flats are one bedroom flats and they provide 46, at least 46 metres squared internal floor space. Um, the, the occupants of the flats will benefit from natural lighting, um, the sufficient standard there. Um, we, the, the properties have Juliet balconies, so they, they, they do have that uh, in favour as well. Um, are we able to put up on screen the presentation to show the ground floor flats? Uh, so Chairman, um, I thought we would agree. To... Can come back in there now. Um, we Sorry, Chairman. Just... I... Councillor, you can only speak once. I keep on doing it and somebody keeps putting it back on. Sorry, Chairman, I, I thought that um, we were coming back to discuss the detail because it's going to get into this discussion now. I've got comments I want to make. I mean, I, I prefer we took it all at the same time. So, Philip, we're going to move to the vote now because that's been moved to the second. Is it? And if, it, if the vote for site visit is refused, then we'll come back to, you, to your comments yeah. and we'll go back to the yes, office. It has, then. It has been moved to the second. Okay. I'll, wait, I'll withdraw my question if we go for a site visit. That's why we check it out first. Thank you very Yes, it's been moved for this to the a site visit. So, Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Black is left. Councillor Burtonshaw? Four. Councillor Evans? Four. Councillor Mary Jones? Four. Councillor Mike Lewis? Four. Councillor Richard Lewis? I think he's there. Yeah. Councillor Pauline Smith? Four. Councillor Des Thomas? Four. Councillor Linda Tyler Lloyd? Four. Councillor Mike White? Four. Councillor Yep, that's unanimous. Okay then, thank you. And uh, final item is Fun Farm, which you find at the beginning, page 113. This is that yours, yeah. It, it is, yes, yeah, uh, thanks. Um, so I'll, I'll be quite brief. Um, so th this is an application for a caravan rally at Bank Farm in Horton. Um, so our the only reason that this application is presented to committee is because it is a technical departure to LDP policy TR11. There's not been any objections from consultees or, or third parties. So in essence, um, policy TR11 um, states that caravan rallies will be permitted up to 65 days per calendar year. So in terms of this particular site, we've already granted um, permission for three caravan rallies this year, which total 56 days. The current application proposes another caravan rally for 12 days, uh, which obviously totals 68. 
um, which slightly exceeds the cap of 65 days um, with limited by policy TR11. Um, one of the rallies, actually, they, they were not able to implement it in fall due to COVID restrictions. So um, I think the, the kind of the figures relating to this are said at the bottom of page 130. But it, in essence, if we granted this fourth rally of the year, we would be granting 67 days worth of caravan rallies this year, which is two in excess of the 65 day cap. However, given the advice from Welsh Government, which suggests that um, the tourism sector should be um, promoted and supported during uh, the, the current pandemic. We are recommending approval of the application, notwithstanding the technical breach of the 65 day cap. So we are therefore recommending approval, Chair. Uh, I move recommendation. Well, I see any other hands up. I think Councillor Thomas has moved a recommendation of approval. Yes, second that, Chair. Right, so we go to the vote then on that. Thank you. And it is for approval. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Anderson. Four. Four. Councillor Peter Black is left. Yeah. Councillor June Bircho. Four. Councillor Will Evans. Four. Mary Jones. She's left just for me. Oh, yeah. On oh, mute. Councillor Four. Mary Jones. Thank Four. you. Councillor Mike Lewis. Four. Richard's got his Councillor Paul Ed Smith. Four. Councillor Des Thomas. Four. Councillor Tyler Lloyd. Four. Councillor Mike White. Four. And Councillor Paul White. Yeah, four. Yeah, it's again. Let's check. Ooh, thank you very much. And uh, that concludes today's business. Thank you for your contributions and patience and so on. So we meet again. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.